The tiny 1.5 horsepower engine that took on America's giant started as a humble Japanese motor in 1956, but today it secretly powers half the small outboards you see on American waters. Here's the mind-blowing truth. That shiny new Mercury motor on your neighbor's bass boat there's a 90% chance it's actually a Tohatsu in disguise. Yet, despite manufacturing nearly 200,000 engines annually and being the puppet master behind multiple American brands, thousands of boaters have never even heard of them. They're the ultimate wolf in sheep's clothing of the marine world, the Kaiser Surze of outboards, quietly controlling an empire while letting others take the credit. This is the story of how a company that started making train cars ended up eating America's lunch in the small motor market. One rebadged engine at a time. Let's rewind to 1922, when aviation engineer Masuzo Takata founded the Takata Motor Research Institute. Busy making, well, pretty much everything except boat motors. Train carriages, radio-controlled generators, even motorcycles. These guys were the Swiss army knife of Japanese engineering. By the mid-1950s, they held 22% of Japan's motorcycle market. Then in 1956, someone had the crazy idea to slap together their first outboard motor. Simply called the OB, a whopping 1.5 horsepower air-cooled beast that could barely push a rubber ducky across a bathtub. Fast forward to today, and Tohatsu has become the Wizard of Oz of the outboard world. They're everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Walk into any marina in America, and you're surrounded by their engines. You just don't know it. That Mercury 9.5 hanging off the transom of that rental boat. Tohatsu. That Nissan 40 your buddy swears by. Tohatsu. Even some of those Evinrude portables from a few years back. You guessed it. Tohatsu wearing a different Halloween costume. The numbers tell an incredible story. By 2018, Tohatsu had manufactured over 4 million outboard motors total since 1956. Their Komogane factory in central Japan spans 370,000 square feet, with a production capacity exceeding 200,000 units annually. That's roughly 550 engines rolling off the line every single day. Their products reach over 200 countries and regions worldwide, distributed through more than 100 large distribution centers globally. What started as a single 1.5 horsepower motor has evolved into a range from tiny 2.5 HP portables to 250 HP monsters, with their motors serving everything from commercial fishing fleets to military operations, surf life saving to recreational boating. The genius of their strategy is that they've managed to become indispensable while remaining almost invisible to the average American boater. It's like finding out your favorite local burger joint has been secretly supplied by McDonald's all along, except in this case, the burgers are actually better. Hey, if you're enjoying this deep dive into the outboard world's best-kept secret, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell, because coming up, I'm about to reveal how Tohatsu pulled off the ultimate power move by playing every major brand against each other. Now here's where the story gets juicy. In February 1988, Tohatsu and Brunswick Corporation, Mercury's parent company, decided to get hitched in what they called a joint venture. They named their love child Tohatsu Marine Corporation, and suddenly, this Japanese company that was making 40 to 50,000 engines a year exploded into a manufacturing powerhouse. Talk about a growth spurt. The arrangement was brilliant for both parties. Brunswick got access to Japanese manufacturing efficiency and quality control without building their own Asian factory. Tohatsu got instant volume that made their production economically unstoppable. The original factory in Okaya City expanded operations. Then in 2005, they relocated to a brand new facility in Komagane. This wasn't just moving boxes. They increased from two to three assembly lines doubled their coating lines, and implemented automated machining centers that dropped their defect rates to near zero. The facility employs around 500 workers, who produce 700 different SKUs, with some production lines capable of switching from a 3.5 horsepower to a 25 horsepower motor in minutes. But here's the controversial part that Mercury dealers won't tell you at the boat show. All Mercury outboards, 30 horsepower and less, are manufactured by Tohatsu Marine Corporation in Japan not designed in collaboration with or utilizing shared technology, straight up made by Tohatsu. 
the ones under 20 horsepower. Tohatsu designs them entirely, while the 20 to 30 HP models involve some Mercury collaboration. Mercury basically says, paint it black, slap our sticker on it, and mark up the price significantly. Here's what makes Tohatsu's strategy absolutely brilliant. They became the arms dealer in the outboard wars. While Yamaha and Mercury were duking it out for market supremacy with their big V8s and racing heritage, Tohatsu quietly cornered the market on something nobody wanted to deal with, small motors. These aren't sexy, nobody's posting Instagram videos of their 6HP telemotor, but guess what? They're the bread and butter of the marine industry. Think about it. Every rental fleet, every sailing yacht with an auxiliary, every John boat in America needs these little workhorses. And Tohatsu realized something crucial. American companies couldn't be bothered to manufacture small motors efficiently. The profit margins are thin, the engineering has to be precise for weight savings, and frankly, Brunswick would rather focus those on big margin 400 horsepower monsters that make boat show crowds drool. So Tohatsu became the industry's go-to manufacturer. They produce engines for Mercury, they made them for Nissan Marine until Nissan exited the US market in 2012, they even struck a deal with Evinrude in 2011 for motors 15 horsepower and under before BRP threw in the towel in 2020. At one point, they were simultaneously making engines for three competing brands. It's like Samsung making screens for both Apple and their own phones, except fewer people know about this arrangement. Now let's talk about what makes these motors special, because it's not just about being cheap labor for American brands. Tohatsu's engineers are obsessed with weight, and I mean obsessed like a supermodel before Fashion Week. Their four-stroke engines are consistently the lightest in their class, and in the small motor world, every pound matters. Take their 30-horsepower model. It weighs about 158 pounds. That might not sound impressive until you're trying to tilt it up in shallow water, or God forbid, carrying it to the shop for service. Their competitors, often 20 to 30 pounds heavier for the same power, when you're dealing with a 12-foot aluminium boat. That weight difference can mean the difference between planing properly and plowing water like a barge. Let's get specific with some real-world comparisons. The Tohatsu 9.8 horsepower two-stroke weighs just 57 pounds. That's lighter than most people's golden retrievers. The four-stroke EFI version, 85 pounds. Compare that to similar models from competitors that often push 90 pounds or more. We're talking about being able to lift your motor with one hand versus needing your fishing buddy to help. Their 6 horsepower 4 stroke tips the scales at a mere 60 pounds, making it the lightest in its class by a significant margin. Even their beefier 50 horsepower 4 stroke comes in at just 209 pounds, when competitors are pushing 240 pounds or more. They achieved this through some clever engineering that nobody talks about. Instead of using traditional heavy cast iron cylinder liners, they developed special aluminium alloys. Their connecting rods are forged from materials usually reserved for racing engines. They even redesigned the oil pan to use less oil while maintaining proper lubrication, saving weight, and reducing service costs. The real magic happens in their Simplique technology philosophy, which sounds like marketing BS until you look under the cowling. They've eliminated redundant brackets, used hollow camshafts where possible, and even optimized bolt patterns to use fewer fasteners without compromising strength. The exhaust manifold on their mid-range motors uses a 4 one design that not only improves performance, but weighs less than traditional designs. They were also pioneers in battery-less EFI systems for their 30 HP models, eliminating the weight of a battery while providing instant starts and smooth throttle response. Every component gets the Weight Watcher treatment. Even the tilt handles are hollow aluminium instead of solid steel. Here's something wild. Tohatsu Marine's factory in Komagane, Japan produces 700 different types of outboard engines. 700! That's not models, that's individual SKUs with different shaft lengths, control types, color schemes, and specifications. To put that in perspective, they have more engine variations than Baskin Robbins has ice cream flavors. And they're doing it all on essentially three assembly lines. Their production system is something Detroit could learn from. They've automated what makes sense, the repetitive, precision tasks, but kept humans for quality control and complex assembly. The result? 
Their defect rate is remarkably low, which translates to some of the lowest warranty claim rates in the industry. Mercury dealers appreciate this because they spend less time dealing with warranty repairs and more time selling boats. But here's the kicker that really shows their manufacturing prowess. They can switch from building a 3.5 horsepower Mercury to a 25 horsepower Tohatsu to a 15 horsepower Revinrood, back when that was a thing. All on the same line, same day, with minimal downtime. It's like a restaurant that can seamlessly serve Italian, Japanese, and Mexican food without missing a beat. Before we dive into how Tohatsu is now breaking free from their behind-the-scenes role, make sure you're subscribed and drop a comment below. Have you unknowingly been running a Tohatsu all these years? The answer might surprise you. Let me share something that'll make you look at small outboards differently. Those Tohatsu motors were designed with Japanese commercial fishing fleets in mind from the start. We're talking about guys who go out in weather that would make most recreational boaters stay home, run their motors hard all day, and need absolute reliability because their livelihood depends on it. These motors had to be bulletproof because in commercial fishing, downtime means no income. This commercial-grade DNA is why you'll find 20-year-old Tohatsu still running strong in fishing villages across Asia and increasingly in American waters too. The controversial truth. Many marine technicians privately prefer working on Tohatsus over certain premium brands. They're straightforward to service. Parts are surprisingly affordable, especially when you buy them as Tohatsu parts rather than Mercury parts. Same part, a different price tag. And they're designed to be maintained with basic tools, not specialized diagnostic equipment. One technician in Florida told me off the record, When someone brings in a 10-year-old Tohatsu 9.8, I know exactly what to expect. Nine times out of ten, it just needs basic maintenance. When they bring in some of the other brands, it's anybody's guess what electronic gremlin we're chasing. Now here's where the plot thickens like day-old clam chowder. Remember how Honda makes those bulletproof four-strokes that everyone loves but nobody can afford? Well, in 2013, Tohatsu pulled a reverse Uno card on the whole industry. Honda began supplying Tohatsu with their larger four-stroke motors from 60 horsepower up to 250 horsepower for rebranding as Tohatsus. This means Tohatsu went from being capped at 50 horsepower four-strokes to suddenly offering a full range up to 250 horsepower. It's like your local craft brewery suddenly getting distribution rights for premium Belgian ales. Suddenly, they've got a complete lineup. The Tohatsu BFT60 through BFT250 models. Those are Honda powerheads with Tohatsu decals. Industry insiders have long speculated about Honda's commitment to the marine market. Honda's outboard division is tiny compared to their automotive and motorcycle operations. We're talking decimal point error small on their balance sheets. Some believe Honda might eventually scale back or exit the marine market entirely, which could potentially leave more of their outboard technology in Tohatsu's hands. But that's speculation. What's fact is that right now, this partnership gives Tohatsu access to Honda's legendary large four-stroke technology. Here's what's really interesting about Tohatsu's current strategy. They're slowly but surely building their own brand presence in America. After decades of being the manufacturer behind the curtain, they're stepping into the spotlight. In 2017, they refreshed their entire brand identity with Tohatsu Blue Wings logo and the tagline, Feel the Wind. Okay, the marketing could use work, but stay with me. More importantly, they're expanding their own dealer network. This is significant because it means they're no longer entirely dependent on Mercury's business decisions or market strategy. They're offering the exact same motors they build for Mercury, but at prices that make Mercury dealers uncomfortable. We're talking about getting essentially the identical engine for thousands less, just with blue instead of black paint. The challenge? Convincing American boaters that a Tohatsu badge carries the same reliability as that Mercury badge. It's like trying to convince someone that the store brand cereal is made in the same factory as the name brand. Even when it's demonstrably true, brand perception is powerful. Let's get real about what you're actually getting with a Tohatsu. The good stuff is compelling, proven reliability, exceptional power-to-weight ratios, and prices that won't require refinancing your truck. 
These motors are particularly brilliant in the 4 to 30 HP range, where their weight advantage really shines. A Tohatsu 30 horsepower tips the scales at around 158 pounds. Compare that to competitors that often weigh 20 to 30 pounds more for the same power output. The bad dealer network remains their Achilles heel. You might have to drive two hours to find a certified Tohatsu dealer, while there's likely a Mercury dealer at every marina within 20 miles. Parts availability can be inconsistent. Sometimes you'll get them overnight from their Texas distribution center. Sometimes you're waiting two weeks for something to ship from Japan. And let's be honest, resale value on a Tohatsu-branded motor isn't quite what it would be with Mercury or Yamaha stickers, even though it might be the identical motor underneath. The ugly truth that nobody in the industry wants to discuss. Brand loyalty in the small motor segment has become largely meaningless. Your American Mercury is Japanese-made. Larger Japanese Tohatsus are actually Hondas, and before 2012, your Nissan Marine was a Tohatsu with different decals. It's a shell game that would make a carnival barker proud. Here's the bottom line that could save you serious cash. If you're in the market for an outboard under 30 horsepower, you're probably buying a Tohatsu whether you know it or not. The question becomes, do you want to pay Mercury prices for Tohatsu quality, or Tohatsu prices for Tohatsu quality? The smart money says go direct. Find a Tohatsu dealer, even if you have to drive a bit. The motors are identical to their Mercury cousins. Same factory, same workers, same parts, uh, different stickers. You're literally paying a 20-30% to 30 premium for black paint and a jumping fish logo. But here's the real kicker. Tohatsu's commercial-grade motors, their TLDI series, aren't even available as Mercury's. These are their crown jewels, kept for their own brand. So ironically, if you want the toughest, most bulletproof small outboard money can buy, you have to go with the brand nobody's heard of. Looking ahead, Tohatsu is positioned for something unprecedented. They've got manufacturing capacity that dwarfs their brand recognition. They've got technical partnerships with Honda. They've got decades of data from building motors for everyone else. And now they've got the ambition to be more than just the industry's best kept secret. The speculation in the industry is that Tohatsu might pull a Samsung. Go from being everyone's supplier to being everyone's competitor. They've already got the hard part figured out, making great motors efficiently. Now they just need what money can buy, marketing and dealers. With Evinrude gone and the industry consolidating, there's a vacuum in the market. Tohatsu is perfectly positioned to fill it. They've been playing the long game since 1956, and it looks like they're finally ready to cash in their chips. So there you have it, the story of how a tiny Japanese company that started with a 1.5 horsepower engine in 1956 ended up secretly dominating the American small outboard market. Tohatsu is the ultimate example of playing chess while everyone else played checkers. While competitors chest-thumped about horsepower wars, they quietly built an empire, one rebadged motor at a time. Today they're the invisible giant, manufacturing nearly 200,000 engines annually, powering boats under Mercury, Nissan, and even former Evinrude badges, while slowly building their own brand presence. They turned being everyone's secret manufacturer into incredible leverage. Whether you love them or just learned about them, you've got to respect the hustle. They transformed from Japan's first outboard maker to the puppet master of the small motor market. Next time you're at the marina, look closer at those small outboards. That Mercury, probably a Tohatsu. They're the ultimate wolf in sheep's clothing of the marine world, except they're not hiding superpowers. They are the superpower. If you found this deep dive fascinating, hit subscribe and that notification bell. Drop a comment. Were you surprised your Mercury might be a Tohatsu? Want more marine industry exposés? Let me know what brand I should investigate next. Until then, keep your props spinning and your royals changed, folks.